So yesterday was one of the most exciting Monday nights that I've had in a really long time. If you were like me, you were probably parked in front of your computer, maybe on your cell phone, watching the Falcon 9 launch of this Starlink 2-1 mission. Now this mission was special because this was the first dedicated launch of those Starlink satellites with the laser crosslink so that the satellites can talk to each other instead of relying on ground stations. This launch was also exciting because SpaceX had a major pause for Starlink missions. They hadn't had a mission since June 30th, so now in mid-September, it was quite a long pause for the company, which had been launching satellites weekly at one point. And of course, SpaceX is proud of reusability for its rockets. So for this particular Starlink mission, the first stage booster launched and landed for the 10th time. Think about that, that is incredible. The Falcon 9 was loaded with 51 of these next generation Starlink satellites. It blasted off at 8.55 p.m. Pacific time and it touched down on the drone ship, of course I still love you, in the Pacific Ocean. As you can see from that beautiful stage view of stage one, having landed on our drone ship for the 10th time. And once it gets back to port, they're gonna see if it has maybe an 11th flight in its future. And you can almost consider this launch a homecoming of sorts for Starlink. That is because this is the first dedicated Starlink launch from Vandenberg. But if you'll remember back in 2018, that was actually where Starlink launched the first two test satellites known as Tintin A and B. And that was back in February of 2018. Now this is not the first polar orbit launch. Back in January, SpaceX launched 10 satellites with the laser crosslinks into polar orbit, but that was just so that they could begin testing that capability in areas that there would be no ground stations like over the poles. But now moving forward, Starlink plans to have all of their satellites have those laser crosslinks. These laser cross links are so important. They allow the network to operate with fewer ground stations and they're also meant to reduce latency by letting data be routed around the constellation. This makes it so they don't have to have those long hops between the ground and orbit. And Gwyn Shotwell also talked about this back in August as to why they had this long pause. Well, it was because they were equipping all of their future satellites, including the 51 that launched yesterday with those laser crosslinks. So moving forward, they will be ramping up their launches again. So all of you Starlink fans and SpaceX fans, they're back in business. And it was just really, really cool to watch this live last night. And I think everyone felt the excitement who watched it. It was, it was so great to see just, uh, you know, such a milestone for rocket reusability and also just another very exciting, um, you know, second stage of development for the Starlink constellation. So a lot of really amazing things happening. Of course, tomorrow we have inspiration for, so a lot to look forward to and I'll actually be flying to Boca Chica tomorrow. So thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you like what you see and you want more Starlink updates, make sure to click like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you soon.